Let's see here. So now in whom, Professor Atik? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. With who? With with your family, your your wife, your daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Your yeah. Son. yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. Until when, Prof Atik, in Osaka? Uh, I applied for one more year. So. Uh, so no, no, not sure. I, I still have some leave, so I would like to stay uh, until I finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice stay in Japan. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> yeah. But, uh, Ini sudah bagaimana Bu Rahma dimulai? Ini sudah 15, 15 peserta. Dua uh, menit lagi, begitu ya Pak? Oh, Oke, okay. ya. Kita pas jam 9. Uh, Professor Atik, your wife also uh, also in Osaka University. Uh, she she was, but uh, for my son's uh, hospital issues, so she stopped after working for six months. But last year she was in Kita Kyushu Kyushu Institute of Technology. She worked there for one year. Um, this is. Your family, your wife, so. Ya, semoga ini ya. Ini teman-teman mahasiswa 2021 dan 2020. Semoga yang lainnya menyusul ini mahasiswanya. Karena yang yang perlu mahasiswa ini. Ya, 2021 kayaknya Pak. Ya, ya 2021 ini kebanyakan. 2020 ada ini Mbak Ruli ini 2020. Oke okay, ini sudah jam 9. Monggo Adik Davin. Oke terima kasih Pak Panca. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah wabarakatuh. Good morning and best wishes to all of us. With his blessings we can gather in this general lecture virtual visiting professor 3 in 1 program 2021. A program that is held by Electrical Engineering Department of Royal Jai Suaranya bisa dibantarkan ya. My name is Daphne Fridian as the Master of Ceremony in this occasion. First of all, I would like to warmly welcome Honorable Professor Atikul Rahman Ahad, PhD from Department of Electrical Electronics Engineering, University of Dhaka, Bangladesh. Honorable Madam Rahmat Mati, PhD, the Head of Undergraduate Program Alin. Electrical Engineering Department of Raja University, Honorable Dr. Pancha Mujiraharjo, 
the head of master program in electrical engineering department of Brawijaya University, Honorable Dr. Trinuwati, the moderator of this event, Honorable all lectures of electrical engineering department in Brawijaya University and all audiences. We welcome you to general lecture virtual visiting professor three in one program 2021. In this split sum occasion, we will listen and learn about academic paper writing and editing that will be delivered by Professor Atikur Rahman Ahad, PhD. To shorten our time, I would like to invite Madam Rahmatwati, PhD, as the head of undergraduate program in Electrical Engineering Department of Raja University, to deliver the opening speech of this program. Madam Rahma, time and screen is yours. Thank you, Mas Dauphin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Honorable Prof. Atikur Rahman, as speaker today. Honorable Burosa, as Vice Head of Electrical Engineering. Honorable Pak Panja, as Head of Master Electrical Engineering Program. Uh, Honorable All Lecturers, Electrical Engineering Department, and our audience. First of all, I would like to thank you to Mr. Pancha for give me a great honor to deliver welcome speech in this good opportunity. My gratitude to Prof. Atikur Rahman beside his busy work, he is willing to give us his experience. On behalf of the management of electrical engineering department, I welcome you all and thank you very much for your coming to this webinar. This occasion is one of three in one activities series. We concern in academic paper writing and editing to improve our ability in journal writing and special for master students. I hope your participation in this golden opportunity. I'm sure you will get a lot of advantages and will bring some benefits. You can improve your English and enlarge your experiment experience regarding academic writing. I think it's enough for me. Well, I do not want to take much your time. It is great to see you, so many of you here. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Mem Rahma for the opening speech. Next, I would like Dr. Tri Nurwati as the moderator to guide the main program of this event. Good morning for everyone in Bangladesh, oh sorry, in Japan and in Indonesia. Uh, best wishes to all of us with thank God because in this pandemic we can get gather with very moment in this Saturday. Uh, today we will have online experience sharing about academic paper writing and editing. Uh, for introduction, we know students, researchers, and professionals need to have good writing and editing skill in the preparation of reports, uh, re uh, presentation, and documentation. Uh, academic paper writing in English is used for a specific purpose and hence it needs to be relevant and without redundancy. And editing is essential parts of writing process and it helps with the effectiveness of our writing style and clarity of our ideas. It is important to understand how to write and to edit an academic uh, paper. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will listen the presentation and sharing from Professor Atikur Rahman Ahad. He will share about academic paper writing and editing. Uh, but before we he hear Professor Atikur presentation, I would like to read his uh, curriculum vitae first. Okay, I will share. Okay. I hope uh, you can see in the screen. Uh, this screen, so his uh, curriculum vitae. 
He is a professor, Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering in the University of Dhaka, Bangladesh. And he is specially appointment associate professor in Osaka University in Japan. Okay, there are many experience and uh, in industry or in university. Uh, for publication is some book, 10 books, okay. And then uh, he write uh, book chapter, so many. Okay, it's uh, amazing for, for me, um, especially. Okay. I think I will stop. Uh, I would like to give reminder to all uh, participants. If you have any question or discussion, please write it down in the chat box or you can directly use Zoom during discussion session. Okay. Uh, I would like to invite Professor Atikur to start the presentation. Professor Atikur, time is yours. Oh, assalamu alaikum. Uh, apa kabar? <laughs> thank you so uh, much. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So, uh, let me, uh, you can hear me, right? Properly? Yes, yes, yes. All right, okay. So, uh, this talk is about academic writing and editing, uh, but definitely uh, this kind of talk is not uh, sufficient uh, within one hour or uh, two hours to cover everything. Uh, but I'll try to highlight some of the common mistakes that we make, especially from uh, countries uh, where English is not the first language and also where uh, the research is not so much developed, like, I mean, like uh, Indonesia or India or Bangladesh. I mean, we are still growing, not like Japan or America or UK and so on. So that's why we need to, I mean, everyone uh, uh, needs to learn how to write better and how to edit better. But for us, it is more important because uh, uh, English is not the first language. So we make uh, many mistakes. Anyway, so uh, my name is uh, Atiku Rahman Ahad. Uh, maybe you know that MD stands for Muhammad in my country. Uh, but you will not find anywhere else in the world, MD is there. So, uh, and it is only for men. So if someone has MD at the beginning you, and Muslim, so you can consider that the name is Muhammad, not uh, medical doctor or managing director. Okay. Uh, so I'm uh, from University of Dhaka. Uh, at this moment, I'm uh, at Osaka University and uh, from Osaka, I'm talking. So it's a good morning here as well, 11 plus. Uh, uh, you can visit my website, ahadvisionlab.com, not now, later, uh, if you have any query or anything uh, related to my research activities, so we can discuss in future. Uh, so uh, you know this flag, uh, I hope. <laughs> so next move to the um, uh, uh, next slide, that uh, um, uh, basically this is, uh, I learned, uh, from many kicks, from many reviews. So if you uh, publish say 200 papers uh, in journals or uh, I mean peer reviewed conferences or books or book chapters, then definitely you have kicked out by many reviewers, uh, I mean many times, 500 times or thousand times, I don't know. So from those experiences, I learned something. We don't like reviewers, but without reviewers, we cannot get our paper accepted. So let's make them happy. Uh, now, so uh, at the beginning, the, the the first point is that I learned through experiences because you cannot get uh, uh, these things from a single book. Uh, number two is that I, I have been part of different journals like uh, Scientific Reports, Nature, or Pattern Recognition Letters, or others, and ICIV, IC, uh, IVP, and different conferences. Through those processes, I learned something, and whatever I'll say are not the perfect advices, but there are many points as well. I hope that we can learn each other. Uh, and uh, if any questions or comments, or if you find a different opinion, uh, feel free to ask and discuss when I finish. Uh, this is my university. 
in Bangladesh, Dhaka University. So this is a, a wonderful place called Karjun Hall, more than 100 years old building. This is physics department and the, there are some other departments. This is chemistry. This place is very historical, but uh, it's not good for students because uh, this is an exam hall. Uh, but when I was a student, I didn't like that much. But as now a teacher, I don't care uh, because uh, students are sufferer. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's a joke. And my uh, building is uh, at, on the right side. So this is uh, my university, different buildings and departments. This is my building and my room was here, uh, uh, but now uh, someone else uh, are using. Uh, so before I start, uh, Richard Taylor, he's a Nobel Prize winner uh, in uh, 2017, what he said uh, in his, uh, uh, I mean, interview, uh, he mentioned that in the interest of young scientists, and which is, I think, a lot of young scientists don't pay any attention to the writing. So Nobel laureate, he was asked that, what would you want to say about young researchers? Instead of saying that work hard, do the best, he was saying that many young scientists don't pay any attention to the writing. And he was saying that, I don't mean uh, writing a novel, when you do research, the end product is something written. And until you have written it down, you haven't done anything. So a Nobel laureate, he is giving enormous emphasis or importance on proper academic writing. So it means that we must give proper attention to the writing so that it can be, I mean, meaningful, it can be better, it can be understandable and so on. So for that target, uh, I'll cover various points on paper writing. Afterwards, I'll mention some points for paper editing, like when you submit a paper, the paper is minor revision or major revision. So you need to do some editing. So what are those? And I'll give some simple uh, examples uh, of a bad paper and how, why you reject it because there are many mistakes. And finally, we'll attend uh, question answers. So let's move to the paper writing points. So when you finish the research, we write and write down, we can write as a thesis book format or we submit to a journal or transactions as manuscript or paper. It can be 10, 20, 30 pages, depending on the journal. Uh, as a conference or workshop proceedings paper in IEEE or ACM, we take six, eight, 10 pages, double column, which is in single column, maybe 20 pages to 30 pages sometimes as a conference proceedings uh, and they take the copyright but in some con case uh, and or book or book chapter but in most of the domains uh, except uh, computer science or triple e you will find especially social science arts biological science that most of those conferences are based on unpublished extended abstract maybe two pages or just abstract so that's why you'll find that many uh, senior people they don't uh, like to consider workshop or conference proceedings paper uh, uh, because, uh, but in computer science and engineering or EEE, uh, we have like this. Then we need write in MS Word, but I strongly recommend that we write in LaTeX because uh, uh, you can find it uh, very easy to write and uh, uh, the output and formatting, everything looks very good. So what you need to do, just install a program, for example, uh, Mic Text or something else and uh, an editor you can find uh, by Googling. Another point is that nowadays we use Overleaf dot com overleaf.com you just visit today create a new project based on a template and then follow basic latex points very simple if you don't know just google it then within 30 minutes you can do it very easily and you can create multiple files add more images on the left side panel and make a pdf and why latex is important because when you submit to a journal say the paper is rejected so you are planning to submit to another journal or another conference and the template or style is different. So you need MS Word, you need too much to do. 
But if you have LaTeX, then automatically LaTeX has its inner uh, coding system. So you don't need to do much. You just add according uh, to, to the, I mean, uh, sub block, sub block, and uh, it will be finally as a, an excellent PDF. So th that's why LaTeX is the most important thing uh, and engineering students are not only that, I mean, anybody uh, should use LaTeX so that, I mean, uh, uh, it can be easily modified and managed. And uh, anywhere, uh, you can work from anywhere and edit. Multiple projects can be handled. So LaTeX has another point that, I mean, uh, 10 people can uh, from different parts of the world can edit the paper at the same time. And you, we can see each other who are working on, of course, you have to give permissions and so on. And it's free of cost. So don't, uh, I mean, uh, consider MS Word only. Uh, LaTeX is, uh, I mean, overleap.com is, I mean, extremely popular now. Some terms on publication, peer review, we know that reviewers will judge the paper. Double blind submission, sometimes you will find that it's written double blind. Double blind means in the paper, you do not mention any author's information, no university or country information, no acknowledgement or thank you in the manuscript. And also you will not get the information about the reviewer. So this is this is called double blind submission. Some conferences journals, if you in, put the information of authors, then they don't review the paper, directly reject it. Another one is called single blind, uh, which is uh, no author information. Uh, I mean, you can add the author information, but uh, you will not get the information about the reviewers who reviewed the paper. And finally, you can get the results except it's extremely rare. If you submit a paper to a journal or a conference and they accept it without any minor revision or major revision, assume that that is a very rubbish journal or conference, unless, I mean, extremely rare cases. So, I mean, uh, usually we have minor revision or major revision. Major revision means you have to do a lot. And still, after the revised submission, it may be rejected or further major revision or further minor revision and so on. And if you get rejected, uh, don't be dejected because rejection is the uh, not to be uh, depressed because it is part of thing. Just why I mention it. For example, Professor Srikanth is a very famous professor. His student submitted a paper, submitted a paper in 2004 at ACA Movicom, a top conference. And what happened that he made a mistake? So he just changed the title or something. Uh, and in the first version, exactly the same paper, 99.99% same, he got rejected because three reviewers gave him one, two, three scores. On the other case, which he resubmitted as a new paper instead of editing, uh, okay? So that paper got three, four, five, and it was accepted. See, the same paper under the same conference belt was rejected and was accepted. So it means that reviewers can be wrong. It is very much possible. Sometimes you are unlucky that the reviewer is extremely expert on that field. And another case, you are very lucky that reviewers are not expert. They like your approach. So they gave, I mean, your paper accepted and vice versa. So the natural experiment suggests that reviewing processing is random. Is it too bad? Just get, here is another example. Reviewers sometimes get extremely wrong. Think about this. Professor David, uh, his paper on uh, hmm, uh, shift, uh, I mean, very widely used method, scale invariant feature transformation. He submitted this paper as an initial version to the topmost conference called ICCV in 1997, rejected in CVPR is a number one conference on computer vision and pattern recognition, rejected. But then he submitted to IJCV journal, International Journal of Computer Vision, a top journal, and it was accepted. And see that last 17 years, so 16, 17 years, till today, I checked today, it has been cited by 64,000 times. So see, a paper which was, I mean, which is cited by 64,000 times, maybe at your entire browser university, all teachers together, citations will not be that high maybe except one or two or my university Bangladesh if we move top uh, five or ten researchers then maybe all other I mean 2,000 teachers maybe the citations altogether will not be 64,000 but his one paper got and that paper was rejected so by two top conferences in consecutive two years it means that a paper can be rejected 
even if it is a good paper. So don't feel offended or sad if a paper is rejected. So what you need to do, do further modifications and improvement as much as possible so that in the next field, you can publish it in a better area. Now, uh, according to Yaman, uh, he mentioned that what is the idealized algorithm for paper writing? Uh, you don't need to agree on that. I don't agree on that part as well, but uh, I'm mentioning because it's a different uh, thinking you can consider. Find problem or data. So you start uh, research, but he said that start writing. He said, yes, start writing before and during research. So. I don't agree on that point, but uh, I say in a different way that start writing means when we start research, we read many papers. So related work, background, storytelling, we can add some, some points in the LaTeX file, for example, or your uh, one file, MS Word file. So that is, you can say that, I mean, uh, initial start writing but most of the researchers will disagree on that part they will say that finish the work properly feel that the work is worthy to be submitted to a journal or conference and then you start writing i also agree on that but anyway he said he's a professor um, and uh, so his idea is that and then he said that do research solve problem finish 95 percent draft and send preview to mock reviewers. Mock reviewers means, say, some of your colleagues, teachers, friends who are honest. I mean, they will not publish it <laughs> without your uh, name or, uh, I mean, and so on. So send preview to mock reviewers, send pre pre preview to rival authors. Maybe someone is uh, there uh, the, who are related to you, say, uh, Phil, say one month before the deadline and revise those checklists because they will mention that oh, these are the problems here are the problems you didn't write this one and so on so revise using checklist and submit so through this manner you can uh, just uh, finish a paper so start writing doesn't mean that i mean before finishing anything you start writing he just mentioned that oh, maybe there are something uh, in between you read or you think you just add at something so uh, so that at the end you don't uh, get too much to write uh, um, uh, within a short period of time now it is what we do that researchers we gather weekly meetings regularly update with the supervisors or I mean uh, the team members so in the weekly meeting we put powerpoint slides and we put tables results and then what we studied what are the arguments flowcharts this kind of thing so this can be considered the powerpoint slides every in every week meeting uh, can be considered uh, as as part of writing as well because you can just copy and uh, paste in the uh, I mean paper uh, when you need to write the paper or finish the paper. Now uh, I mentioned it earlier as well, but again I'm uh, highlighting this point because finding research problem is important. Uh, suppose you think an idea is very good, so how can you extend x because research is incremental so how can you increase or extend x for example you can make it more accurate you can make it faster by some means make it uh, online or streaming algorithm or use different kinds of data type or you can work it on a low power devices or explain why it works so well because sometimes we find a paper, it, it, the explanations are not enough. So if you say that why it works so well or so not, then you need to do more experiments on the same method or idea or making it on a different setting or removing some parameters or assumptions or make it simpler, which is extremely difficult because simple thing is very rare to find. Yeah, uh, that's the point. And we need more simple people in this world and similarly we need more simple methods anyway so when uh, uh, you uh, finish make sure that you write it smartly so that it can be accepted so uh, uh, just to summarize few points that i'll explain those in detail but title in the title don't write fancy words like noble robust best method this kind of things uh, I, I did it, I mean, uh, um, in the early stages of my time, uh, in some papers, I think I have robust or noble, but uh, now I feel uh, that it is very wrong because if I say that something is based or robust method, it means that it must be proven and it must beat all other existing state of the art methods so that my method can be extremely superior 
If it is not, then I sh must not use noble, robust, based, this kind of fancy, I mean, words in the title. Make sure that the title is meaningful, not too long. And according to IEEE transaction, they say that some words should not be capitalized uh, and so on. So you uh, can learn from the journal uh, you want to submit, of course, ACM, IEEE, this kind of, they have good instructions uh, for young authors. So please make sure that you look into uh, those instructions. Uh, authors and affiliations, don't write PhD, student, professor, doctor, next to the name, name, only name, and uh, abstract, write within 150 or 200 words. But recently we find that some of the journals, they have little bit different templates, like four or five subsections. Uh, so to, to uh, I mean, highlight the total work. So make sure that you follow, but normally in a single paragraph, 150 words or 200 words, there's a limit, you try to follow that. Keywords, some, I mean, most of the journals or conferences, you need to add keywords after abstract, four or five keywords that reflect your work. Introduction should have the background or outline, overview of the work, and finally, structure as per sections. And it should be like a story. Just uh, I, I met a professor, he's a big one. Uh, so I asked him just, uh, the, I mean, a couple of weeks before uh, uh, that, uh, I mean, when you decide a paper to reject quickly, he said that he reads the introduction. And if the introduction is not like a storytelling, not giving you the proper background of the work, not related work, proper background of the work and why you need to do this work and what are the research goals you want to solve and basically in which way one or two sentences or three sentences you mention. And the, if this is not, I mean, uh, uh, written properly in the introduction, he just reject the paper without looking into methods and others. Because if you're setting your goal, your preparation at the introduction is not well, then next part is not good as well. So related work or literature review is very important. It should be written from recent top journals or conferences and related to your field and related to the work. Motivation or justification of this work is needed. You can write it at the end of related work or at the end of introduction. It depends how you structure your paper. Uh, proposed methodology or approach or strategy. If you don't propose anything, don't mention that you have proposed because that is cheating. You just mention methodology and you mention that we used the method of X or method of Y or we mix the method of this and this, but don't just write proposed if you do not propose anything, okay? Uh, experimental setup on results, analysis of results. In the result analysis, you must do in-depth discussions. I mentioned in the last presentation on research methodology, uh, have a look on that part. Good points, shortcomings, you must mention uh, in the paper and need in-depth analysis. Don't write too much shortcomings in the paper because in research we do, do and think, do brainstorming, but in the research paper, don't write too much on negative points because uh, on that case, reviewers will be happy to reject the paper quickly. Write, to, I mean, uh, logically, re, I mean, uh, uh, two or three points, but don't write too much. I mean, there is a, a balance, make sure that you don't, uh, you can learn for, through experiences and so on. Conclusions, in the conclusions, I have found many papers that they just copy and paste or almost rewrite the abstract, but conclusions is not the abstract. It can be a little bit extended. It should have a little bit more information and uh, more highlighting more on the results and one or two future works. And acknowledgement, sometimes we acknowledge after the conclusions, before the references. I mean, we thank some people who helped. We thank the fund, uh, uh, funding, uh, I mean, sources that they funded us, so we thank them and so on. But I found that some students thank their supervisors, but supervisors should be included in the author list. Why they thank the supervisors? Because they think that supervisors or senseis, they helped so much but they did nothing. 
so they are not part of the authors <laughs> so uh, i mean this is very uh, weird uh, and this is uh, the problem of the supervisors that supervisors don't work definitely they guide supervise and monitor and help and uh, sometimes give idea and so on but supervisors should inform each researcher from the beginning that without my clear written permission you must not submit this work to any journal or conference written permission not oral because they can say that ah oh, sorry you said madam you uh, told me to submit but uh, you forgot and uh, this is a problem because sometimes students without understanding they submit two or three journals or conferences at the same time we know that dual submission is just like haram I mean, because uh, we don't want to pub submit two papers at the same place and also uh, publishing similar work, same things again and again and again. So this is also, I mean, uh, very wrong. And sometimes before they submit, they write, they don't check plagiarism, similarity checking, and they submit and uh, what happens that there is a problem. So that's why uh, a supervisor must approve the paper that he, uh, after checking and so on and on that case there are no uh, thanking to the supervisor so make sure i do like this i also found some papers that very religious people they thank their i mean god allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, because uh, he gave the, he, uh, him or her i mean special blessings and so on and some of them are so kind to their parents that they thank their parents as well please don't do that acknowledgement is for those who helped you during the research uh, significantly, but they cannot be part of the uh, author list because uh, they did not contribute the thought process uh, of the research. Or those who funded you, like give money uh, or give uh, opportunities to work uh, uh, in a company or something like that. Anyway, referencing is very important. There are various dimensions. If you use LaTeX, you don't worry about, uh, I mean, referencing problem because beep text and so on, very easy, uh, uh, you can do. So pick recent papers, pick from top journals or conferences, provide enough references now uh, to make sure that your background is enough but, and avoid web links. But if you need uh, to use web link, make sure that you put uh, the access date, but don't put an access date uh, too late so if your paper, like now I submit a paper to a journal uh, of Browser University, and you find that the exact date is the 2019. So automatically you understand that the work is old, maybe already kicked by two or three journals or conferences. So I submitted to your place. So don't do that. So you will recheck and change the date so that people can feel that this is I a mean, new one uh, or recent work. Uh, contributions or originality is extremely important. Most of the papers uh, uh, from the abstract, we cannot get the clear idea what the paper is about, like what is the contribution of this paper? What is the originality of this paper? Be clear, no ambiguity, okay? Because you need to clearly mention what you did. If you propose something, make sure that we have proposed this part only. If you did not propose, you mentioned that we implemented this method and uh, tried this on different data sets, or we implemented X idea and make it simpler and so on, so that uh, we can understand clearly. Because if your paper is clear from the abstract, we make an initial mind with positive note that the authors are honest and sincere. Don't always mention that we have proposed, proposed, even if the proposal uh, is very minor, but don't mention proposal uh, everywhere. I mentioned that plagiarism, like copying uh, other sources and so on. What happens that many research students, uh, we don't know, uh, we just copy and paste from uh, another paper because when you write, we write different methods, we write related work, background. So we copy and then we edit. Don't do that. To avoid this kind of things, what you can do, read an abstract of read a part of another paper. Think about it, understand it. Then write of your own in English so that the entire paper, the writing style remains the same. Because if a part is active voice, another part is passive voice. If somewhere you write we, another part I, and blah, blah, blah. So automatically there will be a problem and the writing will not be uh, good. And sometimes you'll find that very good 
uh, I mean, uh, structure of writing and some parts are very weak writing. So it means that the authors did not write the paper carefully, did not edit the paper carefully. Regarding plagiarism checking, see the reason. Uh, in one of my books, some professors, they give some kind of good points like praising the book, okay, marketing uh, purpose. Uh, so, but still the plagiarism checker, you see that they mark some consecutive words similar to another source. So through this manner, if the similarity goes too high, 30, 40, 50%, then somebody can say, oh, it has more similarities, so reject it. But basically it's not the case. So make sure like this. Now back to the abstract. In the abstract, it can be six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 sentences within 200 words. Here you should highlight the area of the word then maybe one sentence or maximum two sentences state the problem that you want to solve in one sentence for example indication of methodology what method you are used using i mean uh, but to solve this problem two or three sentences mention the main findings or results maybe two sentences and then write the main conclusion maybe one or two sentences finish so make sure that you have like this. But I find many abstracts where area of the work covers 50% of the abstract. No need because just your title and abstract should have some information, maybe one or two sentences good enough. If I need to know about the area, I can look into the main paper. Usually no reference in the abstract, no repetition of abstract in introduction or conclusion and never write in this thesis, in this report, in this project, usually don't write because we write a paper. So you can write in this paper or in this article or in this manuscript, better in this paper uh, you can write. But if you write in this thesis, so people or project where report, people will feel that most likely you did a project or thesis and then you just copy and paste from there. That's good, we do like that, but you did not pay proper attention. In the introduction, state the research area, importance of this research, why this research is important, and focus the area of this paper that which you want to solve. Summary of little bit existing works, indicate a gap of existing works, raise questions, make a story, okay? Then outline your purpose of this research, and for that purpose, mention your approach and little of findings, which you will elaborate in the methodology part and so on. Last paragraph for introduction should have like should be like this, that the paper is organized as follows, like section one has this, section two has this. Finally, you conclude the paper in section say six uh, in conclusion and so on. But make sure that you do not make too many sections. I find some papers from weak researchers that they make maybe four pages paper or six pages paper they have 10 sections, sometimes only one paragraph as a section, sometimes only two sentences as a paragraph. So these are extremely poor way of writing. Usually you should can have the paper in five basic section, okay? Five basic section means uh, uh, like abstract, then introduction, then related work or background, then methodology or your proposed method or whatever system you developed or proposed, then experimental results. If your paper is long, uh, and then you need to have a, a discussion and analysis. Otherwise, uh, in the result section, you cover discussion and analysis. Finally, you conclude the paper with some future work guidelines and then go for references. So without reference and abstract, you can have five or six uh, different, I mean, uh, sections, not 10, uh, 20, unless you genuinely need uh, longer. So literature review, in the last uh, presentation, I mentioned that how to do literature review to do research. Here you need to write how you approach uh, like this. So mainly from recent work, mainly from top journals and conferences, don't just mention other works like two, three sentences, then another two, three sentences, another two, three sentences, no. Make a story of current research conditions. From those works, you make your motivations so that you can try to fill a gap to fill a solve a problem by your work. Sometimes related work or literature review or motivation or background are written 
within the introduction part if the paper is short because you cannot accommodate too many related work part because if you add many more related work basically you need to add references and then you cannot cover your method because in some conferences or journals uh, you have page limit like two columns only four pages or six pages so you need to add more results and analysis in the methodology, it is very important that you mention flowchart or flow diagram or system flow diagram from where we can clearly understand what is the work about. Make sure that we do not copy and paste or write too much on textbook materials or very well-known methods, for example, CNN, deep learning. So what is deep learning? What is CNN? What is LSTM? You don't need to write. You just mention LSTM and then put the reference finish because uh, if someone needs, uh, they will look at the reference because LSTM or CNN or I mean another DNN model or so on uh, have or maybe GAN for example are used uh, even that uh, 100,000 people or papers so I mean don't write unnecessary things uh, and so on equations are important but make sure that those equations uh, you uh, explain all the variables you used and those uh, you highlight which variables are more important for your task and so on. Clearly highlight the contribution, what exactly uh, you did in this work. And of course, if related, mention data collection process and techniques, which is important. If your data collection requires, uh, I mean, ethical clearance, mention it in the paper as well, that you have uh, ethical, uh, you have, I mean, taken uh, ethical clearance. Then in the results, data visualization is important that you uh, present the data uh, and, and so on, explain those properly. Visibility of the graphs or images are very important because sometimes the graphs or images are so tiny uh, you cannot understand what is inside. Don't just describe the graphs, explain in depth. Because if you just, uh, many cases we find that there is a graph, we can see the graph is increasing. So you said, the, see, we can see in figure five that uh, the uh, uh, electric, uh, I mean, current is increasing. This is I see, but why? Is it significant? Is it something new? Is it natural? Which part is natural? Which part is unnatural? You need to explain and why. So this is very important. Compare with the state of the arts, but it is very difficult to compare with, with state of the art means the best results, but some most many cases we cannot do uh, everything. So we cannot compare, but at least you discuss logically if you cannot compare with the new results. Make sure that same things should not be in a table and also graph. No need. If you make a graph with the same data from a table, then why the hell you put the table in the paper? So make sure that which one is more relevant, table is better or graph is better. And sometimes we use many small, small tables and many uh, one or two graphs, uh, one after another. Don't do that. Make sure that which one is more suitable. Can you merge or concise them and something like this? Another point is that we hide, <laughs> this is true. In the result section, we don't mention all the negative points. Just like before marriage, we never mention uh, negative points about the, I mean, prospective bride or groom. So uh, in the paper also, we do like this, that we don't, uh, put too much negative information about our method. We just praise and praise and praise that, wow, what a good boy or girl, something like that. But in a good paper, we must or we should add few information about the limitations of the method so that uh, there is a realistic and those from those limitations, future researchers can get insight to move further. I mentioned earlier that if the paper is short, then discussion part will be within the results. But if the paper is not short, like six or eight, 10 pages, then discussion should be a separate section. Uh, and uh, here you explain a lot about why, how, where the works well and uh, doesn't work. So analyze as much uh, as possible, bad or good points, uh, discuss the outcomes as per the goal you set in the introduction. You remember that in the introduction, you mentioned that these are the goals we would like to achieve in this paper. So those things you need to 
I mean, uh, look into and explain that, see, in the introduction, we said that we want to achieve this goal from our method. And in the discussion, you mentioned that, yes, we, uh, I mean, uh, approached and we clearly demonstrated or demonstrated and so on and so on. Refer other papers to support your claim or failure, because sometimes you are saying that this is happening, but if you refer another good journal or conference paper recent that now, okay, what are we achieved or what, is, what our outputs are, are similar uh, to uh, different concept by another. So you can, sub, I mean, uh, uh, um, refer other uh, good papers or journals to justify your claim and similarly for failure. Uh, for example, uh, if you use uh, traditional methods, not deep learning, for example, on a work, but uh, you know that some research reviewers will say, why did not you try deep learning? So if you, or if you try deep learning, but result is not good, why? So you can find that why. So look, wh whether there is any paper uh, related to that small data set, if the data set is smaller, or maybe in that domain, like say sensor based or skeleton based. So if those things are there and smaller data sets and uh, yeah, the other papers also did not get good results, or we cannot confirm that deep learning is always good for this kind of data and so on, this is important. On that case, a reviewer can feel that authors gave plenty of time to justify their work and with other supports, other papers supports. Mention the impact of your result, it is important. And mention some limitations and recommendations. It is not exactly as feature work. Uh, some limitations and recommendations that how do you think that a lim problem limitations X, limitations Y, limitation two can be solved in the future? something like that. Analysis, discussion, generalization, uh, which I mentioned earlier, that we need to explain in depth why it works well and why, where it fails and why, what are the boundaries, and whether there is any experimental or theoretical proofs, and so on. So be concrete on your findings and conclusions. We need mathematical or statistical analysis or tools to investigate, compare, if not possible, discuss, and so on. No repetition of abstract in the conclusion. Summary of the entire work. It can be in two or three paragraphs. Last two, three sentences are usually the future works. Usually no reference, no section number for future work because it is part of the conclusion section. Acknowledgement, no section number. Reference, no section number. If you use LaTeX, then you don't need to worry about section number, figure number, citation of the figure number, reference citation. Automatically, these are added. In some journals and few conferences, we need to mention competing interest. Competing interest, according to nature, scientific uh, nature, it is means that authors declare that they have no competing interest, like you are not part of any financial or non-financial interest with another company or group so that they can influence your work. Like for example, you are published submitting a paper on COVID-19, say one medicine, okay? But you are part of a company uh, who are producing this kind of vaccines or uh, medicines. So maybe uh, you are taking funding from those companies, is it? If it is, you mentioned that we are, our work is funded by that company or something like this. Otherwise, you just mentioned that there is no competing interest. Usually we blindly write that we declare that they, they have no competing interest. Author's contribution is a very important. Many cases we know that, I mean, authors are added uh, very differently. Uh, I mean, without understanding uh, or without being part of the work. But authors, for example, it, it can be right like this way that uh, authors equally contributed for the proposal and writing, say first author, and another one did uh, another one. Or 
in some journals, you have to write who did the conceptualization, who did the methodology, formal analysis, original draft preparation, writing and editing, supervision. So all those informations are mentioned here. So this is important. So it means that when you have five authors, make sure that all of them are involved by one of those issues significantly. Because if a paper has complained, all of them will be penalized. So make sure that we do it. All authors have read and agreed to the published version of the manuscript. This is important when you submit first time and the final one. All right, ethics statement is important. In many cases, uh, mm, uh, we don't need, but in cases where we use animals or human subjects or children or this kind of things, then we need to mention that we took the ethical approval from the university. If your university doesn't have any ethics committee, you can do it through medical doctors or maybe the dean or someone who will write that uh, we agree and then you start, I mean, your data collection or research and so on. Otherwise, when you submit to a good journals or conferences, they will complain that why the um, there is no ethical statement. Sometimes we need to get the signatures of participants that they agree upon uh, data collection. So to de demonstrate, show their data and so on. Yeah, another very important point is that author writes for scholarly purposes. We don't, uh, mm, this is when a paper is published. So how, what, uh, uh, I mean, the thing you can do, it is a very common question nowadays because can I share it in my website? Can I share it in ResearchGate and so on? Uh, mm, but according to Elsevier, I copied the exact one, I mean, just uh, this year when I, sub, I, mean, pub, I mean, published another one. So. Uh, they wrote that I understand that I retain. So I, the author, can retain. So author rights include the right to use preprint, like before the final version is printed. So you can use the preprint or accepted manuscript or published journal article, which is the final one for personal use and internal institutional use. Like you can print it or share to your colleague or university and so on. They also include the right to use these different versions of the article for scholarly sharing purposes, like you can share. For example, preprint, preprint, not the final version, preprint, which is almost 100% of the final, finally published paper, can be attached on any website or repository at any time. So make sure that if you publish a paper, you cannot upload according to this information from Elsevier, that Elsevier's work, you cannot publish it any uh, at the final version. Final version can be shared internally, personally. But in a website or, or a server, you can upload the preprint, like before the final version. So this is important uh, just to know so that no confusion of copyright or others. Now, uh, do self-assignment at home that find five papers uh, related to your work and interest. Select one from top journals and uh, one from poor journal or conference and review those papers and try to reject those, okay? Uh, but through this process, you can learn uh, uh, what we have talked about to find other problems, be a reviewer and review, okay? Be a mean person uh, uh, just to learn, not in real life, okay? In real life, we must be good person. Now, I mentioned those, you'll find almost similar things for paper editing. So uh, before the submission and even final submission, make sure that your language is good. Improve writing skill, story like, write like a story. No typo, no spelling mistakes. Sometimes we write data, date, from, form, and write English because uh, because of Indonesia or Malaysia, you have more problem because uh, uh, you use the, uh, I mean, uh, alphabets A to Z. So automatically, uh, if, when you write Brazawa uh, uh, University, so maybe university all of your life, universities, not the Y. So I found that similar things. And in Japan, for example, they pronounce uh, some of the words like data. They don't say data, they say date. So when they type, they by type date for example, like this way. No grammatical mistake, no mixed pattern. Like if you write proposed in another sentence, you write proposed in another one proposes in another one have proposed. 
you see that mixture. So automatically, the reviewer will find that you are a not you are not a good researcher. And nowadays, it happens that uh, professional academic uh, um, uh, writing checking, uh, like I mean, before you submit, you ca you can pay money, and the amount is huge amount of money. Okay, maybe some of your monthly salary, maybe more than that. I know uh, you give that and they will check, but actually uh, it's not needed if you just do careful checking uh, uh, because basic grammars are very simple. For example, one of the students we write and then it is is singular, each, every, a, n. And if you use grammarly.com, which is free uh, up to a limit, you can edit as well. Actually, what I tell my students and what I do, I read a paper three to five times. I read a paper as if I am an expert. So I try to find theoretical problems. I read a paper as if I know the area, but I am not an expert. So I check the paper like this way so that the storytelling is good or not. Related work is properly concocted or not. Then finally, I write, I read the paper as a naive person that unrelated work and just looking into the language and grammar. So minimum, if you do this kind of three or four times or five times, and if there are five authors, they all do again and again and again, always you will find mistakes. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the point. Just like, I mean, some uh, the dot dot in-laws find problems uh, on their, I mean, dot dot in-law in family lives, <laughs> always. Whatever you do, they find problems, unfortunately. I don't know in, uh, whether it is in culture, but in many cultures, I mean, uh, in-laws uh, have problems. Now, uh, no punctuation problems, use grammarly.com, no mixed fonts, but if you, or size, if you use LaTeX, then don't worry about size or fonts because LaTeX will automatically uh, uh, manage the spacings and everything. No copy paste of images, try to redraw and draw in a better resolution, high quality, and make sure that if within the images, the font sizes should be clear and same as the text, not too large, not too tiny. And sometimes people use too much color, don't overdo uh, in terms of color, okay? <laughs> uh, so for example, this is an image. You see the punching, pushing, even I, I cannot read it. So why should I write here? I can write just A, B, C, D, and then at the bottom of the figure, I can mention A was punching, B was pushing and so on. So this is important. In the revised submission, make sure that uh, we answer all the comments and questions from the reviewers. Did you do that? This is important. A rebuttal means not fighting. Rebuttal means that you may disagree, but be logical. So when reviewers give you some comments, even stupid comments, you feel that the I mean reviewer uh, is not an expert or he or she didn't understand uh, the work, but still you cannot say, oh, you are a I mean a stupid guy, you don't understand anything, uh, and you are just without understanding the uh, paper you commented bad about my paper. Go to the hill. Don't do that. You just very politely um, write down and uh, explain the things because uh, your paper only you know. Others may not understand, I mean, the uh, thorough, uh, I mean, uh, consideration. So all authors uh, approved or not, don't write doctor, professor, like Mr. and uh, professor, doctor, MS student, this kind of things, no. A paper should have a corresponding author. Many people don't know. Corresponding author is the author who is the main in charge for entire communications and take the main responsibility of the paper. Usually, the first author can be the corresponding author or the main supervisor can be the corresponding author. So make sure that you do like this. In some early career cases, uh, some journal, I mean, some universities or some uh, somewhere, they ask you how many papers you are the corresponding author. So uh, that's why this is an uh, important issue for some cases. But when you become associate or professor, maybe uh, not that much important. <laughs> In the revision, make sure that you cite it. Say you have twenty references at the end. Have you? I mean, put those citations within the paper. Uh, did you mix up the reference style? Put the references from quality journals or conferences. If you put web link, make sure that you put a title and a date uh, uh, and so on. Remember that if your paper is well read, it will have more readers and useful. Just like if your food is very good, 
then your home will be uh, with guests always. That's why I want to visit, uh, I mean, uh, your uh, university and your area again, because when I visited, I found that the food was excellent. And that, uh, it is definitely uh, a reason that I want to visit your country again. Uh, so make sure that uh, your paper is well read uh, and make sure that your contribution of your paper is crystal clear don't write anything wrong or extra uh, exaggeration of the work in the rebuttal or debate uh, make sure that you do it professionally with strong references or arguments say uh, a reviewer said something uh, which you don't like but you can uh, make sure uh, that uh, mm, uh, you put some references to explain or disagree with the person so you may fight and go against a comment too, but don't do as you do at your home with husband and wife and so on, or friends. So this is very important, okay? Uh, very politely. Uh, sometimes when you submit uh, or resubmit, make sure we need, need to do uh, put the name of the corresponding author's signature and date. If you don't do it, then the, it will be delayed by one or two weeks because they will send you again because sometimes you need to fill some of the information. So before submission, especially to good journals, always keep two, three hours in hand so that you can uh, properly check every part and do it. Graphical abstract is another point. It is optional, but uh, you need to add title and the author name as well. And here the graphical abstract means you put a block diagram or an image from where we can understand the work better. So it's not the abstract, it's a graphical abstract. And many journals nowadays in the website, you see that they put graphical abstract and highlighting points, three or five highlighting points, like research highlights and the abstract free, others are not free. So research highlights in some cases, maximum uh, five points, but they mention 100 words, characters, or 125 characters, including spaces. So if you write a bit longer, they will ask you to edit it. Remember, when you submit the paper as a revision, make sure that your research highlighting part is also edited properly according to the main task because they will publish it in the website for free. So research highlighting points should be edited as well. When you edit the paper, make sure that you put in color. Uh, I put red color, but any other color is okay for the changes. But if you change too much and put color everywhere, just like, I mean, maybe uh, you uh, put the paper on the red color box and put, then uh, reviewers will find, oh, you changed too much. It means that it cannot be uh, accepted so quickly. So they may give another revision and so on. So on that case, technically, you don't need to put red mark on say small part, small part, maybe where the core information you put uh, color. Otherwise, uh, we'll feel that the oh, the paper has 60% new results or 60% or 70% new information. So it is very difficult uh, to judge very quickly because usually second revision, reviewers give much less time. They just look into the answers or rebuttals. See, this is one paper. Uh, it was, uh, I mean, rejected by one uh, uh, reviewer. I can understand. So review one says for my paper that, this paper is not very innovative. Ooh. Because of the lack of innovation in the classification method, it is of little significance. And he just wrote it for us. No other comment. I, and I feel that he rejected the paper because uh, uh, it came as a major revision. And another reviewer gave lots of comments and so on. Finally, we made the paper accepted. How? Because we explain the, uh, we thank him for his stupid, brutal, uh, words. Uh, we say thanks a lot for your uh, comments. We did not say thanks a lot for your wonderful comments. And then we mentioned what we uh, improved. And again, we put highlighting points like this way, this way, this way, where we changed what, everything, so that a reviewer who initially rejected can feel positive about your work. And finally, we wrote and we mentioned which figure we changed, which one we added, and all the points. And finally, said we firmly believe this is we said that our paper will present a valuable contribution to the research community. Thank you very much.
and we said when we submit whether you accept it or not go to the hill <laughs> we don't know you but this is what uh, the best we can do and what happened that the paper finally came as a minor revision finally it got accepted in a good journal so it means that i mean you need to be uh, very careful and patient to do that now i mentioned already some of those but let's uh, reject uh, a crap paper say title you see the title is too long a smart no need to write a smart we can say solution uh, and here uh, mobile based eye center localization tracking and ampersand is not good to write eye blink detection you see that's all the things i don't need to write maybe localization is not important tracking is also maybe not important eye blink detection is good enough on android platform that can be used for many applications or something like that. this is also not important so uh, these kind of titles are i mean very poor title and by looking at this kind of title a reviewer can be very happy why because reviewer can easily reject the paper without any much time to spend because if you a reviewer reviewing is we know that volunteer job we review many papers hours after hours to develop the research community though some journals and conferences especially journals they earn money uh, especially mdpi and this kind of things i mean billions of dollars i think <laughs> but uh, reviewers get nothing so uh, if we can reject a paper very quickly we become happy that no need to spend much time definitely we don't want to reject uh, we want to accept a paper and give constructive criticism but if we find some major mistake and understand that they are not good group then it's easy i uh, remember poor people are ignored everywhere ex except by very good people so uh, make sure that you don't present your paper as a poor people by paper okay this is very important unfortunately uh, authors and affiliations uh, no mr professor doctor don't write two double thing if you are uh, both of them are from the same department so don't write both and then put the email in the abstract in this thesis don't write thesis i mentioned i don't use reference and you ref put the reference here uh, and so on uh, usually the abstract are not too large keywords i mentioned four or five but here are too many keywords the paper is organized as follows and related work background uh, no underline or no bold in the paper unless it is very important usually we put italic propose uh, very quick i don't know why i blink you see that here i blink space here i blink dash so this kind of common mistake and here proposed here you mentioned propose so these are i mean not good and when we mentioned powell at l so on that case the reference should be here so uh, like this don't mix fonts citations uh, and so on but if you write in latex then no problem uh, make sure that you put the same pattern here and here you see uh write a good caption to reflect the figure from this figure what can we see we wrote only face detection experimental but it doesn't mean anything detail so write at least one sentence or two sentences so that i don't read i don't need to read the full paper from the figure i can see the meaning of the figure same goes for the table uh typo if you write all caps typo is very common like a spelling mistake it is actually detection t i o n but it is detecting <laughs> uh, so make sure that you don't make mistake this image is so tiny and inside the image the text 2.2h 0.4h are in very difficult to realize and if you write 0.2.4 basically write a 0.2 so that i can understand that this is like this way equations it's fine but then in the text you write t r r not as per the variables of the main equation these must be according to the equations here and this is here where you should be smaller because uh, uh, it is a continuous sentence so make sure that all the variables of an equation are according to the same uh, structure uh, and so on 
and uh, uh, spacing uh, abnormally and this kind of things makes you no problem. Uh, we sometimes make figure, fig, figure, F, or uh, this kind of uh, things within this paper. Make sure that you follow one style. <laughs> Here you see that this is a table like pulling like this way. So this uh, graph, uh, the font is, I mean, faded. Here, uh, Y axis has no meaning. What is the meaning of Y axis? Here, Y axis has no uh, meaning and X axis, we understand that this is memory, but here you see the font size and at the top of the font size, these are extremely poor way of presentation. This is my paper. Uh, I don't know whether finally it was published like this way or not. I made it uh, from one of my papers when my students initially wrote it. So aspect ratio, clear font, too large or tiny, make sure that we don't make this kind of mistakes. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, flowchart is important, but you see that this flowchart is so tiny. You cannot see everything. And again, you see that there was a line here somewhere. Maybe this line uh, goes here. Okay. But this line is missing. This vertical line is missing. Sometimes in image, we have typo, spelling mistake. We don't see. Missing connections. That's why it is important that if you submit a paper based on the flowchart you wrote in your thesis, one full page, but when you convert it into two column IEEE template, then you make it squeeze it in narrow, but you cannot uh, squeeze like this way so that I can understand nothing. So the best option is keep it as two column full page or how, I mean, like this way, or remove some of the steps and make it a new flowchart so that it is visible, clearly visible. Fonts are readable, okay? Otherwise, yeah, and don't use colors uh, in boxes or something like that. Uh, so be, otherwise, I mean, due to the box, colors and others, if I print, number one, due to printing, you are wasting colors. Like if I print this page, you see because of this, uh, uh, what is the color, blue color? I mean, unnecessary, uh, ink, ink, I mean, printer, I mean, this is not good for environment. But another point is that, I mean, uh, my reading or visibility as are no, not good as well. So make sure that you don't do this. And this kind of, uh, I mean, uh, too short sections or subsections, not good. And make sure that you follow the same style everywhere. If you use LaTeX, then don't worry about this kind of problems. This is a table and this kind of colors and font size are not good. Um, here, uh, uh, see again that, I mean, things are not clear and it is created from Excel. So screenshot maybe or something like this. So the quality of the image are extremely poor. If you cannot make it better, at least remove those, I mean, uh, text and use additional, I mean, text box to put X, I mean, uh, high highlighting or better information and so on, that is better. And mention the ranges or values uh, of X axis and Y axis and so on. 0%, 10%, 20%, 20% 90%, no need. Uh, here, no need for even percentages. You can write, say, 10% and then 30%, then 50%, like this way. This is another one. So two tiny graphs, no explanation of it not good presentation, make sure that in the entire paper, you follow the similar structures for tables and images. Here are some other mistakes I mentioned, and uh, we see nine sections. Future works also as a section. I mean, these are very, very poor way of uh, writing. Acknowledgement, no need for section. I thank my supervisor for his support. I, we love my mother and other, other, I don't know who they love, but anyway, this is not proper acknowledgement. Acknowledgement, you can uh, thank the funder, I mean, who funded you. Funding, so the references usually don't uh, have any section number. So just references and so on. So avoid too many tiny sections. If you have a review paper of 30 pages, then it can have seven sections or eight sections based on the demand. Reference style, if you write in LaTeX, usually no problem. Uh, because, uh, but it's still sometimes there are problems so you can edit. Otherwise you see that here many authors, but you one author you used at all, but here used all authors. 
and again you see that uh, here you dot m dot atikud dot rahman and something like this volume number different way int dot journal international journal so i mean if you do like this way a reviewer can see and feel that i mean you are not careful and these kind of things can be easily managed the point is that you can be a poor point poor person you cannot serve high quality food but you serve very clean food very well organized food and that is important uh, when you use uh, reference uh, from different websites make sure that you put access date but sometimes i find uh, that uh, 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 kids use google.com or wikipedia and so on these are meaningless and two old dates uh, so and so on another questions always come how many references i can use now 10 50 20 if your paper is only few pages then the 15 or 20 references are good enough but if your paper is too long then 40 50 can be required so it depends whether you need but if you just write five or seven references these are not good survey paper i find sometimes uh, short survey papers and with 10 or 20 references only unbelievable you see it and you become <laughs> happy and rejected because uh, it's a rubbish survey paper having so small amount of references as well as low quality references if you find that these are not from top journals or conferences so don't get rejected recap a good researcher with genuine hard work should uh, i mean uh, be careful about title authors and affiliation abstract keywords four or five related to your work and introduction that gives your background and storytelling literature review or related work proposed if it is proposed otherwise just methodology or approach or strategy or system experimental setup and results uh, analysis of the results or discussions conclusions acknowledgement if you need to thank someone otherwise not references and appendix or author's profile sometimes if they have this option now again i mentioned just select five top papers and then read those be a reviewer and review so that you can practice what you have learned today so if you find that this is your research area just after this presentation search download and then do it and before i end i mentioned which i mentioned earlier that uh, she is a nobel laureate uh, on chemistry she was asked on her interview uh, that what will you do from now on because you got the nobel prize what is next she said that amazing things that we can use to move into the future the combination with machine learning and AI is a frontier that I am going to ride to the next level. This is I'm mentioning that machine learning AI is a frontier, extremely, extremely important in any field nowadays. So if you don't know, just learn it. If your ac academia does not include or if your courses do not have this one, just I recommend that you teachers consider to include one or two subjects like this way so that the students can prepare themselves and they can learn and uh, get ready for the future this is very very important the future is in your hand she's in chemist but still she is considering machine learning and ai uh, uh, to explore so uh, that's all from my side and um, thank you very very much uh, let's work the hardest and uh, see you in indonesia hopefully uh, after a few months or next year definitely uh, I hope, and uh, you can find some of other lectures uh, under this, I mean, my website, uh, and there is a YouTube, so if you just uh, subscribe it, then you can have it. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that is very good insight for us to understand about the academic uh, paper writing and editing from various points in paper writing and editing. Uh, few points on paper editing and sample of a bad paper to reject. Uh, Bapak, Ibu, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we are on question and answer session or discussion session. Maybe there is uh, a question from audience.
mean, no question is silly. So please feel oh, free no. to ask any questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, maybe. Uh, Doctor Tri, I have questions. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Atik, for your presentation. This is very actually this is very interesting for us. Yeah. Actually, many many audience here yeah, is uh, many audience are uh, uh, students, uh, master students. I hope your explanation here yeah, can increase their knowledge about uh, the writing. Okay, um, my questions. Uh, I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the first one. Uh, some sometimes the committee, the the, uh, the conference committee, has to submit extended abstract. Extended abstract. Actually, how how to determine the best paper from just from the extended abstract? This is the the first one. <coughs> And the second one, how is your opinion? For example, we, <clears throat> I, uh, I submit the journal, and uh, from from the reviewer, uh, we some some reviewer asked to author to add or cite he or her paper. Uh, what what's your opinion? I think that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, uh, uh, the first question is that from extended abstract, uh, how to decide the best paper? Uh, actually, again, I mean, uh, I mentioned at the beginning that to make it simpler, simple and short, uh, and still, uh, I mean, clear to understand. It is not so easy. Now, the point is that if someone can reflect in one page or two pages, uh, about their work and results and highlight uh, what they achieved uh, in a very uh, clear manner. So you shortlist those papers, say 10 abstract from those or 15. Afterwards, you put those in a consecutive two or three uh, sessions and bring five professors re uh, related to that field and request them that you must attend those 15 presentations and they give a scores. So that is another uh, strategy that in uh, from those uh, uh, ranking as well as I mean during the presentations because sometimes you write something very good just like uh, advertisement, the advertisement is so good that you buy this from online and when you find it at home, you find that you use this. Okay, so uh, sometimes so this is uh, not so easy but not so difficult as well. Uh, this is uh, you can do uh, for uh, to select the best paper among extended abstract. So initial shortlisting is important. And uh, actually in the abstract, you can mention that you must write your contribution in one sentence at the beginning, for example. So if the, in the ex extended abstract, they clearly mention their contribution that we have proposed a method and beat this method. And you can also give some idea before the submission that if they uh, compare their method with uh, some state of the arts and others. So these kind of things also uh, they can mention. Okay, number two is uh, uh, if a reviewer mentions, so this is a very tricky thing because uh, some reviewers, uh, the men. Seven papers to add, and I was a guest editor of that journal. Uh, so uh, I complained to the system and told the authors that don't add any of those papers. Okay. Uh, and we remove the uh, reviewer. So if you find that some reviewers are giving you too much, then you write to the uh, editor separately that uh, we don't feel that those are good enough or related, number one. But sometimes uh, maybe, for example, I am working on human activity recognition, you know that. I have 
a good, I mean, several books on human activity recognition and just recent book, a purely on human activity or contact lens, okay? Now, if I have two or three or four exactly related materials, and if you do not, sub, I mean, recite those, uh, one or two, it means that you are missing to cite a uh, most important material, not because it is my material. I feel that this is very important. On that case, if I mention my one that you may consider to uh, mm, uh, refer this or this without definitely reviewer. I mean, uh, on that case, if you uh, share three papers only from you, I mean, uh, uh, author will understand that the reviewer is one of the authors. But if you mention two or three different papers and one of your papers, maybe that can be logical if it is extremely related, otherwise not. So it's very difficult, I mean, um, but don't blindly, I mean, uh, add. Uh, uh, but if you do not add anything, maybe uh, the reviewer will be <laughs> unhappy, but I'm not sure. Uh, you can, uh, you need to make a balance uh, uh, regarding this, yeah. So any other questions students can ask in uh, uh, Indonesia and then maybe Pancha or yeah, uh, Nuriyati can uh, translate in English. Yeah, please. Okay. Wahyu. You. Uh, there is Wahyu Peprianto. Maybe you can show your face. Uh, Professor Ratiko, can I permission to ask to you? Yeah, yeah, uh, please, please. Hi. Uh, my question, this is a uh, related board. Uh, credibility and how uh, I can write a uh, reference. Uh, if I use data from the internet or I collect data from internet or the uh, or uh, my data from a research that has been done. Mm. Uh, the example, uh, Imagnet. Imagnet is a website provide uh, many, many data. Uh, mm -hmm. I research in computer vision. <laughs> what is the credibility of the data uh, and uh, because if i uh, if i do i learning uh, i training deep learning ai uh, with uh, little data or very very, very small data mm. it is not good uh, mm. what is the credibility and how uh, i create a, ref a reference uh, what's better do i have to contact uh, the author or I just read in the refrain if I use it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor. Uh, thank you very much. I mean, um, uh, good question. Uh, normally, nowadays, um, credibility of data like ImageNet is extremely, extremely well known. Uh, so no problem regarding uh, ImageNet or this kind of, uh, or Kaggle, for example, Kaggle repositories or others, others. Now, if you create a new data set by yourself, then a reviewer can say that credibility of their data because uh, they don't know whether your uh, data is selected or if something is not working, so you remove it. I can remember that during my PhD uh, time or something like this, we took 20 actions uh, for video. And after working, I found that some of the videos are not uh, giving good results. So I just removed. So now I have 15 uh, actions, for example. Now, nobody knows that initially how many I had. So I just showed the good one. So that's why it's not benchmark data set. And that's why if I have this kind of thing and I submit, so top journals or conferences will just kick it away because I did not try on benchmark data sets. Now, many fields, we do not have benchmark data sets, which I can use. For example, regarding healthcare, I mentioned in my first presentation that healthcare or hospital related data or rehabilitation cases, we don't have much data. So it's very difficult. So now, for example, mask and face recognition. Face recognition, we have millions of images, data set, benchmarking, and we are using. But we do not have mask related, for example. We have gait walking, but we do not have gait with occlusions or gait with, uh, for example, natural scenes and so on. Very few. So on that case, you can create by yourself. But when you create by yourself, you explain the data 
in a very well manner or just submit publish it in a conference or just data set you put in an archive or in a website you put every detail so that people can see the details of the data set and feel confident about your data that you are not cheating or hiding any information number one number two when we have a new data you will find that all the new data sets when they propose they don't propose a new method they just use existing five or ten baseline baseline means existing uh, more or less state of the arts or whatever the methods so they just just github or they implement and then run those methods on the data set and show that baseline existing different methods how they perform and this is the results and then they submit and those things are published in the top journal as well sometimes if the data set is strong then somebody else or you will propose a new method to beat the baseline results and then propose a new method so that is another point on that case the data sets credibility will come because you are not limiting anything it's open access because if a data set is not open access, then this is a problem. They cannot judge whether the data set has any tricky part. This is one point. Uh, another point is that uh, deep learning on tiny data set. Yes, it's a problem. Uh, we know that in image domain or video domain, deep learning is I mean, massively used and with great success. But in sensor domain, for example, in my presentation also I mentioned, or in smaller data sets or in skeleton based, sometimes deep learning cannot comprehend because of the lack of enough data. On that case, I mean, the relationship among each other or some other or some pre processing and then go for some sort of deep learning. So these are other points. So uh, you have to, I mean, make a balance uh, based on this. And what we did, like in one paper, we mentioned in the rebuttal clearly that why our results on some of the deep learning approaches came bad because there are recent four or five papers. Luckily, we published and we attended and we know. So luckily, uh, so we mentioned those papers that those are the, we did not cite in the main paper because of the page limits uh, but in the rebuttal we wrote many references and give the results that see this data set which is uh, this amount of data sometimes a uh, deep learning performed well sometimes other non-deep learning methods classical machine learning or i mean uh, uh, handcrafted features performed better these kind of things we mentioned so reviewer we put extra table which were not so that is i'm saying that in the rebuttal you can put extra information or even during the first submission as a supplementary material extra material you can put lots of information in the uh, uh, during the first submission so that reviewers can feel that you already tried those information but or tried but results did not come because this is this 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 the, 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 through this manner i mean you can demonstrate your credibility uh, and uh, of course citations uh, from the top journals uh, and top conferences are very important and in the rebuttal if you put even exact sentence like quote double quote from that paper that they said this claim then automatically you can for example we published a book chapter where we mentioned we claim that um, skeleton based large data sets deep learning is a must but a smaller data set deep learning is not needed now we showed some results and others now if you work on smaller data set on a skeleton and you find that deep learning is not performing you can just quote that part this is one but on that for that purpose you need to read a lot and be part of the exact research forums who are working on that and at some point you will know that uh, this is this is this is this is yeah so every day is a learning process and i'm learning uh, you are learning and if we keep learning then definitely we can uh, argue our thing profoundly remember based on my experiences so far very little but still i feel that uh, it's i should not say racism but there is ism existence in academia as well so if a paper is a from a developing countries and even if the paper is very good some reviewers may consider the, oh uh, it is not credible it is not justifiable they uh, uh, they, they can easily 
I mean, uh, make bad comments about the paper, just like uh, we teachers do for weak students. Like if a student is CGPA is 3.9, another student is 2.9, maybe Pancha Sensei or I will trust the 3.9 than the 2.9. So this kind of feelings, unfortunately, it, it should not be done, but it is among the, uh, I mean, uh, research community as well. This is I found after working, I mean, uh, almost two decades in this domain. So I feel that as there are things, so we have to be much more pragmatic, a bit extra effort so that a reviewer cannot judge in a bad manner. So this is very important. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Wahyu, for your question. And uh, thank you, Prof. Atikur, for your answer. And maybe another question. If there are no question, maybe I will uh, I will uh, give you a question about introduction. Uh, yeah. For me, the introduction is the part of uh, the hard part for me. Uh, maybe you can give me uh, tips or how I make a sentence can be a, a good paragraph and avoid a plagiarism for okay. introduction. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, actually, introduction is very, very important. It's not for you as well. It's for most of the researchers because um, when we write introduction, uh, this is the starting. So a reviewer reads the introduction part and if they are confident and they understand the flow of the work, storytelling, then uh, mm, it is easy. Uh, so make sure that we write this very carefully. And someone who is good at writing uh, and understand the area of the work among the co-authors should write the introduction part. Only introduction by the best person who writes. The discussion part, result analysis part should be written by someone who is good at mathematical analysis and understanding and who knows it how to write different methods and so on. So uh, together with the main author or authors, I mean, he or she uh, can write this part. Now, uh, in the introduction, it is important that, I mean, uh, state the research area and importance of this research. Uh, make sure that every sentence is short sentence, not like three, four lines. Sometimes we find that just uh, when we discuss, we don't finish a full sentence. We discuss and then uh, maybe a comma, a little pause, then another part, then another part, another part, something like this. But in English, what we uh, studied, we studied that if, then one part, then another part. Like if I go there, if I eat poison, I will die. Okay, so it is one. We, since, then another part, though, then and one clause, then another clause something like this but when we write we write and 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 comma 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 one block of sentence then another block of sentence something like this big on that case we understand maybe even my co-author is not understanding what the hell it was uh, i mean uh, written so it is important that we try to write short sentence maximum uh, maybe uh, one line and maybe it goes to the second line split the sentence because even in my case most of the time i found from reviewers that some sentences are too long and unclear so if a sentence is unclear make sure you, we don't write this number number two sometimes we mention uh, a sentence for example hmm, i don't have any paper randomly here but say a sentence which, uh, which, we did a sentence that okay uh, deep learning is good for these data where is the proof if i claim it if i say this then i have to give a reference and mention a reason that why it is good why it is bad otherwise just writing general general sentence like political leaders should not be good so that is important as well that politicians they can make any comments uh, even in america uh, now we have excellent example of Donald Trump. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, that's why our politicians in Bangladesh or Indonesia or Indians, they are very happy that we have better examples Donald Trump. So at least, I mean, we can say whatever we want to say. So don't do like this. 
when you say write something make sure that statement a claim should have a reference or reason then focus on the area of this paper summary of existing works lay say one paragraph very short summary or, or two paragraphs uh, if you have a related work then don't write of existing works too much but if you do not write separate related work then you need to write two or three paragraphs as a related work or background work when you write make sure that you mention a gap of existing works like raise questions make a story that i mean uh, what is missing Th then i want to solve this missing part that's why i am proposing this method and you mention the approach and little of findings so that's why i recommend that i mean even if your work is or even if my work is extremely small work but when before writing before submitting submit the topmost journals on your field and find papers related to your work by topmost researchers find 10 papers read the, their introduction or abstract how they concocted those what way they wrote then you can basically improve the writing it's not so easy even for me uh, and of course uh, the last paragraph of the introduction should have the paper is organized as follows section one uh, uh, we covered the basics uh, or introduction of the work in section two we uh, put the related background in section three we put the methodology and blah 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 this kind of information uh, is uh, necessary so i think uh, i mean this is only i can say and reading and reading and uh, another point is that you know that we cannot see our own mistakes okay that's why we need to marry so that uh, we have our couples they can find our mistakes and uh, complain about <laughs> so similarly our paper if i write i cannot find the my problems or mistakes so if my co-authors they read the uh, work very carefully as a reviewer in mind very critical way okay not uh, to not in a bad manner but i mean in a critical way so that uh, it can be improved that that is uh, one important part i think uh, we can improve the paper uh, especially the introduction writing uh, okay i i found a paper from noor uh, so uh, it's about walaikum salam i'm working a thesis about classification hand gesture recognition excellent on number patterns using machine learning and imu sensor from related work one limited to number five pattern okay uh, it's not yet known the results of classification of dynamization my question is how i can strengthen uh, the statement and make storytelling in my introduction section that there is a problem in the research one and two thank you oh okay uh, so you are working on hand gesture recognition on number patterns like one two three like this using imu sensors and you mentioned that related work one is limited to number five pattern and uh, zero to nine Okay, and they used static gesture. Uh, it's not known the results of classification dynamic. Okay, now the point is that actually, uh, as I know this field little bit because uh, some of my students they are working on IMU sensor based and dynamic gestures and uh, static gestures and uh, uh, one paper in this year tenth ICIV conference uh, it was. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, achieved the uh, one of the best paper awards. Uh, I was not a co-author, but this is from my colleague. So I know this area, um, luckily. So uh, thank you for, uh, I mean, question. Number one, that if the reference one and two are recent reference and from a top journal or at least a good journal or good top conference, then a reviewer can find it okay. But if the references are weak, then we can feel that maybe your claim that uh, these two limited works are uh, there uh, it's not true and basically it's not true because uh, uh, i mean hand gesture imu sensor base there are lots of works and uh, maybe the imu sensors are different but not only numbers numbers and alphabets and not only static uh, gestures there are lots of dynamic gestures as well and sign language also there are many 
I mean, not many, but good number of works. So now the point is that if I if the paper comes to me, uh, maybe I will uh, not accept from this point. But if the paper comes to another researcher who did not work on sensor or gesture, because it's very difficult to find the appropriate researcher, we may find someone who is working on computer science, maybe someone who is working on computer vision. So the vision guy will see, oh, uh, they use IMU sensor, but in video-based gesture, hand gesture recognition, huge success. We know this because sign language recognition has huge success uh, and they can do many, many things for the last 10 years. And in Kaggle, you will find that huge amount of data sets are available. So your paper will be also rejected based on uh, what you have uh, uh, mentioned here. But you need to highlight a little bit more of uh, where you mention mm, mm, because there are two things. One is the sensors you are using. If the sensors are different than other methods, and they are sensors, so they, they, you can highlight this part, number one. Number two, if you consider only 10 patterns and static uh, gestures, uh, zero to nine, for example, what about zero to nine, but continuous, not one and then stop, then to, is it continuous or not? Uh, it covers, say, I mean, static or dynamic as well. Uh, if anything good, you can highlight, or if your data set has, huge amount of data compared to other two methods you can highlight that in your storytelling or if you mention that uh, for example now i'm talking fully in front of the pc the pc is almost one uh, one full hand and maybe like this distance but if i go further then it is very difficult maybe you can listen to my kids noise uh, background so this is a noise so this kind of noise in your case like for example now why you do this? You can say that you need the uh, numbering or gesture understanding for rehabilitation patients or someone who is doing from home. Now, on that case, one may not have uh, a, a laptop. He or she can do in front of a mobile phone. Now, the mobile phone, maybe the hand's angle is, see the mobile phone is here, but my hand is not 90 degree. Okay, not this angle, maybe this side or this side or maybe far or maybe like this way, this way. Still, your method can perform better or not. So you see that which other did not do and then your method did something little bit different, little bit better. Then you highlight uh, on that part. So, uh, mm, and never say, because if you say that it's not yet known, the results of classification for dynamic gesture, it is also not true because you did not study uh, 1000 papers related to hand gesture recognition. And I know that people did on hand, uh, dynamic hand gesture recognition. So you can say that, I mean, there are not enough good methods that can be one option or the progress on dynamic hand gestures are not enough. Yeah, uh, that can be another one. Or when you go for hand gest dynamic hand gesture, so uh, you pinpoint what do you mean by dynamic gesture in your case. So you can put some images, uh, blocks or uh, draw, and then make an image and differentiate how it is uh, visible. Without reading the text, if I see the image and understand it, that is uh, preferable and better, I think. If still it is not clear to you, maybe you can email me after a week and then we can make a meeting and then uh, I can listen from you a bit more and then uh, I can try to discuss and help. Yeah, uh, so feel free to knock me later on. Thank you. I hope, semoga cukup ya, yang penanyanya. I hope it's okay your, for your... Uh, answer. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Prof. Atikur. Okay. I think there are no uh, question again. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Atikur. And uh, so, 
uh, all audience from a warm and interesting discussion. I'm sure it is will be a, one of your guides uh, to produce a good quality of academic paper for conference or journal or your thesis. Okay, thank you. Uh, Davin, time and uh, screen back to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, moderator and resource persons, also all, all audience for attending this program. Hopefully, we can meet in another occasion soon. I, Devin Ferian, as the master of ceremony, would like to end this program, and hopefully you have a nice day. Thank you, and good morning. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. Thank you so much, and hope to see you in the future. And all young researchers, my request is that, I mean, do the best uh, so that we can produce better works and help our uh, country and community to grow better. This is very important. And if anyone has any query, you can knock me in uh, Facebook Messenger. Uh, I hope that I'll uh, reply sometimes. Uh, yeah, and we can discuss uh, in future as well. But uh, do the best. Don't be lazy, okay? <laughs> That's the most important point. Yeah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. I hope, I hope sometime, uh, I hope one day uh, invite you in Malang. Inshallah. <laughs> yes, yes. Inshallah. See you then. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Yeah. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Dik Davin. Putri, Bu Rahma, terima kasih. Terima kasih, Pak Panca. Terima kasih, Putri. Adik semuanya, terima kasih. Adik juga, terima kasih, Bapak Ibu. Jangan lupa untuk presensi ya, teman-teman yang di SKE, SKI. Ya, mahasiswa di presensi. Oke, izin dulu. Oke. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum.